Renovating a vintage horizontal twin cylinder model steam engine. This is part 7 and here we see the paint drying. I do apologise for part 6, it was a bit boring. This one's slightly more interesting. In these videos I mention quite a lot the importance of sympathetic restoration. But sometimes I have to break the rules. This is one of the pulleys from the end of the crankshaft and if you look at it as I screw it onto the mandrel it's very badly damaged, it's a bit chewed up, somebody's obviously had a pair of grips on it at some time, and this is not going to make the engine look good. The thread down the centre of this pulley is 5 16 diameter by 26 threads per inch. So for a mandrel, I'm actually using a tap of that size, and it works quite well. I'm only going to be taking very, very fine cuts. I would not ever dream of using a tap as a mandrel for anything that needed any heavy duty cuts. I'm making sure that the cut is very, very fine, just enough to clean up the surface. With a renovation such as this, I'm being very careful how much metal I remove. If I destroy the part by being a bit over ambitious, then I'm going to have to remanufacture it. And I don't have any castings for this engine, so I would have to machine a new pulley from a solid piece of metal. Furthermore, making a new pulley to be exactly the same shade as the metal on the other pulley is going to be very tricky to match. So I'm being extra careful on this job because I do not want to make one more pulley, never mind two. It's very important to make sure that the lathe's speed and the rate of feed is correct for the part that you're machining. This seems to be okay, the lathe isn't complaining, there's no chattering, and I'm getting a very clean, nice finish. Once I've taken a complete longitudinal cut, it's time to face the front of the pulley. Whenever the cutting tool gets to the end of the work, don't forget to wind back the cutting tool, otherwise you may get a spiral on the surface of the work as it travels across it. In this clip I'm facing the front of the pulley with the cutting tool. I'm having to do this because both the front and rear surfaces of the pulley are badly marked. One of the problems of having to do this is the centre pulley groove, which I don't think was in the middle to start with, is certainly not in the middle now. So I will have to machine the other side to make it match. It is essential that the finished pulley does not have any sharp edges. It's the first thing that someone's hand's going to reach to touch when it's revolving. And if it has a razor sharp edge and it lacerates someone's fingers, they're not going to be too impressed with your model steam engine. Finally, a quick facing cut across the centre boss finishes off the pulley. Time now to remove the pulley from the mandrel and have a quick look at it. There's still a chunk out of it, but that's from the casting process. There's nothing I can do about that. That's called a blowhole. I'm now reversing the pulley onto the mandrel. And all I have to do now is machine the other side to be the same width as the side that you see nearest the chuck. And once I make sure it's firmly screwed onto the mandrel, all I have to do is machine the face of the pulley to be the same thickness as the part of the pulley the other side of the centre groove. Once again I'm taking very slight cuts. This pulley is not on a heavy duty mandrel and it's not supported at the outer end and it would be disastrous if it jumped out the chuck at this stage and broke the tap that has been used as a mandrel. You do need to have an excess of patience for jobs like this, but it's quite rewarding at the end when not only does the engine run well, it looks good too. And in exactly the same way as with the other side, I'm taking a facing cut off the centre boss. I'm using a file to finish off and get rid of any sharp edges. When filing in the lathe, be very careful not to catch the file in the chuck, and do not ever use a file in the lathe that does not have a big wooden or plastic handle. The type of files with the sharp spike on the end are not what you want. Also be very careful if you're using sandpaper, that can be dangerous. As I've said many times, always wear suitable protective equipment. Now this is a very small round needle file. It has a big handle on it. You can't see the handle, it's off the camera. And again, be very, very careful. It can be badly injured using these kind of machines. So I'm not saying that you should do it this way. This is just the way I do it. Here I'm checking the finished sizes of the pulleys by putting them on a piece of steel plate. And they're more or less identical. So for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.